2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 17. For the love of Christ controls us, because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Good evening, everybody. Um, Pastor Mike here once again, um, and I'd like to welcome you to the Mosaic Recovery Community, where God and recovery is real. I just like to say, um, like my boy Jovan Davis always says, like today is a good day to be alive. Um, like if if you woke up this morning, I I know things may not um, be going the way you wanted them to go, or they may not be looking the way you want them to look. But I just want to say that if you're awake this morning. Um, if God has blessed you with life, like today is a good day, right? Today you have an opportunity to um, just experience everything that God has for you. You know, I was talking with a friend of mine um, the other day and he was like, uh, Mike, you know, he's like, I believe that um, God continues to wake us up so that we will have the opportunity to be saved. I was like, man, you know what? That makes a lot of sense. Like God continues to wake us up so that we have an opportunity to be saved whoever you are, wherever you may be. And if you are already saved, God continues to wake us up so that we could be um, a blessing to others so that we can praise him and so that we can glorify him through the relationship that we have with him so that we could be an example of what it looks like to be in a relationship with him and so that we could attract others to this relationship. Um, if if you're not, um, you know, being a, um, just a um, an ambassador for Christ um, as a Christian, then, then I would suggest that you um, go spend some more time in your prayer closet um, and just continue to ask God, like, how, how can I be an ambassador for Christ, right? Because I truly believe that God didn't bring us to where we are right now um, in this place um, of recovery um, just so we could be in recovery. I, I truly believe that he brought us to where we are because he has a purpose for our lives and he want us to live out that purpose. Um, I, I don't know if you've ever lived in lived a life um, with no purpose or with no hope, but I can tell you that it's not a great space to be in, like to just be, to just have all of this joy, all of this peace, um, and, and to have nothing to do with it. Uh, um, it's pretty empty, you know. Um, the guys in recovery say, uh, I was miserable in my addictions, but I'm not going to be miserable in my recovery, right? I was miserable in sin. Um, I'm not going to be miserable saved. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what um, is thrown at me. You know, I don't care what I face. Um, I know that I'll be able to face it with God. And so today we're going to um, we're going to be talking about step 12. Um, I know you're probably used to seeing um, Reggie, but uh, he'll be back next week with uh, with a powerful message. And then one of those beautiful songs that he likes to sing at the end. And I wish I could sing, you know, but th that's a story for another time. But anyway, we're going to be talking about step 12. Um, and, and step 12 says, having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we tried to carry the message to the addicts and practice these principles in all our affairs. Having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we tried to carry the message to the addicts and to practice these principles in all our affairs. <laughs> And so today I'll be talking to you uh, from the subject, it's not about you, it's about the gospel. Um, and so our scripture will be Acts 22, 11 through 16, and it reads like this. Uh, so let me set the stage for you. This is Paul, and um, Paul uh, begins um, his journey in recovery. He, uh, he begins his um, journey 
um, and faith um, at this moment. Um, this is where he has an encounter with Jesus. Um, and then his life is forever changed. Um, right. So uh, I always joke with, um, with with the people who um, we minister to in, the, in this um, in this ministry that um, to me, I believe Paul was the first person um, ever in recovery. Right. That maybe just maybe um, the recovery program was developed off of off of Paul's life because he has his encounter. Right. Um, and, and this is where he restores his relationship with Christ. Um, then he he recovers his identity. He finds out who he is in Christ. And then he he captures his purpose and then he goes on to walk in that purpose. Um, and so that's the three phases of our mosaic recovery community. Um, and it's, you know, based off of Paul's experience here. Um, so uh, Acts 22, 11 through 16, it says, I was blinded by the intense light and had to be led by the hand to Damascus by my companions. A man named Ananias lived there. He was a godly man deeply devoted to the law and well regarded by all the Jews of Damascus. He came and stood beside me and said, Brother Saul, regain your sight. And at that moment, at that very moment, I could see him. Then he told me the God of our ancestors has chosen you to do his will and to see the righteous one and to hear him speak. For you are to be his witness, telling everyone what you have seen and heard. What are you waiting for? Get up. Be baptized, have your sins washed away by calling on the name of the Lord. So again, I want to talk to you from the subject. It's not about you. It's about the gospel. Let me pray. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us this evening and anoint us with your presence. Receive us into your bosom, a place of refuge and a place of comfort. Shower the seed that has been planted in us that it may grow and bear good fruit. Father God, rain your word down on us like manna from heaven, giving us the bread of life that feeds and nourishes our spirit. May I be moved to the back and may you be moved to the front. May it no longer be me who is seen, but you who are heard. Holy Spirit, have your way in this message. Have your way in this place. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. I pray all these things in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and through the power of Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. And so I know I've told this story many times about how I came to the program and how I eventually started the process of recovery. Right. I talked about the struggles, right, the fights and the, all the uncertainty, et cetera. Right. You've heard this story before. If you've been following us um, throughout this uh, journey that we've been on or throughout uh, these messages that we've been airing, you've, you've heard this story. Many of you who've been connected with the Mosaic Recovery community or heard my testimony or heard me speak somewhere before. You've heard all of this, right? But but here's the piece you've never heard before, right? Here Here's the piece that most people don't talk about, right? Here's that butt naked truth, right? That we always talk about that most people avoid. This is the road that that is less traveled, right? It's the honesty, the transparency, the vulnerability and the willingness to expose our deepest, darkest secrets, right? So for me, there was about two, maybe three, maybe even four weeks um, of me being in a program, working the steps of reto recovery, where um, I had the mindset that I was I was going to use my recovery. Now, now you hear what I said? I was going to use my recovery to exact revenge on all those who I thought did me wrong. Yeah, I, I was going to show some people some things, right? All those people who wouldn't put up with my BS anymore, I was going to show them. All the people who said no to me, right? All the people who said I was going to always be messed up, right? I was going to show them. All those who rejected me, I was going to show them. I was going to, I was going to take my recovery and get fresh, right? And crap on everybody who I felt crapped on me, right? All the women who rejected me because I was broke and looked at a little rough sometimes, right? All the women who left me because I cared about being in the streets more than I cared about being with them, right? I was going to go back get it, it, and knock them off, right? Plus some. Um, oh, yeah. Don't get it twisted, right? I was going to use my recovery and become a greater monster than I already was. See, I had been in recovery for about a month and a half. And, and, and so I started to fill out, right? My complexion cleared up. Um, I instantly got a pay raise, right? For many of you who've been in this uh, recovery journey, 
um, for a while, you know what it means. Like when you stop doing certain things, you instantly get a pay raise, right? So I was looking good. I was smelling good. I was feeling good. Um, I was ready to do some damage out here in these streets. See, um, these are those thoughts, right? These are those things that you don't really hear on a regular basis, right? People who, uh, who think the recovery, uh, process, um, or, or think getting clean is a way for them to get back or get even with people, right? It, it develops this sense of pride um, and arrogance within us. You know, we we be, we, th we start to think more of ourselves than what we actually are, right? We forget about all the harm and the pain that we caused, right? And, and we feel like um, everything has been done to us. And so now we have an opportunity to do to others what we feel has been done to us. But many of us, we've done this stuff to ourselves, you know what I mean? Anytime we make a decision to um, enter into a destructive lifestyle, right? We think we're we're entering into it by ourselves, but we take all of the people with us that we love. And the monster that this destructive lifestyle creates, right? Other people, um, you know, they suffer um, as a result of that monster. And so um, it's not their fault, you know, that, that we did or became who we became. Um, and so there's really no reason to try to exact revenge. But many of us do. Um, I I thought that way for a long time. And so um, I think for me, the, 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 the issue was, right, I was still new to the program uh, and I had no idea what step two embodied. You know, I hadn't had a spiritual awakening yet. I hadn't realized that um, that my recovery wasn't really just my recovery. Right. I hadn't realized why God had allowed me to go through all that I went through and live to tell about it, right? I hadn't realized that my recovery, right, that the, that the the life that I was now given the opportunity to live was a gift from God that he had given to me, right? Not for my glory, but for his glory, not to fulfill my purpose, but to fulfill his purpose. See, the problem was I hadn't entered into a relationship with him yet. I hadn't recovered my identity yet, right? I had no real purpose other than to satisfy my own selfish needs and desires, right? I hadn't realized that my recovery had absolutely nothing to do with me, but everything to do with God and his message. I'm going to say that again. My recovery, I don't know about your recovery. My recovery has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with me, but everything to do with God and his message. And so you may ask the question, what is this message, Pastor? Well, I'm glad you asked. The message is 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If anyone be in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has passed away and behold, the new has come. The message is if you receive Christ in your life, recovery is possible. Being made new is possible. And God has called me to be an example of this. Uh, if you're in recovery and you're walking this journey, God has called you to be an example of this. And so how do we become this example? Another great question that I'm glad you asked. We become this example by showing people what it looks like to be in a relationship with Christ, right? We make it attractive for people to be in a relationship with Christ, right? So that they would be drawn to this relationship. Um, I talked about this last week. Um, this is a program of attraction, not of promotion. Um, salvation is a program of, uh, is, is a, um, experience of attraction, not of promotion. Um, and so by us walking in salvation, right? Living the lives that God has intended for us to live the correct way, right? We, we become ambassadors for, um, for this relationship, um, drawing people into this relationship. So then that God can do the work. Right. He uses us for his purpose to draw people in so that he can then um, through the power of Holy Spirit, do the work that needs to be done with them. Now. This is what I know to be true. Right. I don't be an example by how fresh I can get um, or how much money I have. Um, I don't become an example by how many women I can have sex with. Um, and I definitely don't be an example by exact revenge on all those who I feel did me wrong. I do, however, become an example by being a person of integrity um, and having good character, by being generous, um, by being humble, 
um, by forgiving people, by sharing the gospel and pointing people towards the one who saved my life so their their life can be saved. This is how we become examples. Now, we must understand, right, that um, for many of us, right, we've lived a certain lifestyle for so long, right, that we've been accustomed to a lifestyle for so long. For me, from the age of 12 to the age of 40, that's 28 years I lived in this destructive lifestyle. And so these revelations, they don't come overnight, right? I told you it was weeks before I got it, and it's taken me years um, to live out this revelation, and more is being revealed to me, right? Keep coming. Don't use. More will be revealed. Um, this revelation comes by working the steps and having a spiritual awakening, right? Because as a result of working these steps, we now enter into a relationship with God where we recover our identity in Christ and we capture our purpose that God has intended for us. And through the power of Holy Spirit, we are able to live out that purpose. See, this is about more than just being sober. Um, if you think it's just about being sober, then you're sadly mistaken. That's why we always say that there's a difference between being clean and being in recovery, right? Being clean doesn't require much out of you. You know, it just requires you to stay away from that one or two things or whatever it was that um that, that kicked your butt. You know what I mean? And many people who are clean, they replace their drug of choice or their sin of choice with another one. You know, okay, I don't do uh, uh coke no more, but I smoke weed or I don't um I don't I don't drink no more, but I go I, I gamble. You know what I mean? I, I'm still uh abusive to people, um I'm still uh conniving, I'm still manipulative, you know, I still treat women um or or the opposite sex bad, right? Um I still lust. Um, you know, I I'm still living um out of my flesh, but I'm not using the drug or alcohol um that 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 I feel ruined my life. But being in recovery, see being in recovery requires a lot more. Being in recovery requires this spiritual connection. Being in recovery requires the ability to say, you know what, I have to walk away from some people so that I can live the life God wants me to live. Being in recovery means I have to let go of some things that I thought were important to me. Being in recovery means being responsible. Being in recovery means that everything about me now has to change. My mind has to be renewed so that I can live the life that God has intended for me to live. Being in recovery requires a lot more out of us than we think. And that's why um, not a lot of people um, maintain in the process of recovery. Now, you, a lot of people stay clean a long time, you know what I mean? But not a lot of people um, make it in this journey of recovery because, because it requires so much of us. Um, and so, yeah, it, it, this is about more than just being sober. This is about um, being an example. Um, and so I have a question, a um, couple questions, actually. Since you've been in recovery, um, what have you done? Like, like what, what, what positive impacts have you had um, in your home, in your community, in your workplace, um, in your ministry? Um, just what, what, what have you done since you've been in recovery? How have you had an impact in someone else's life? Have you um, led somebody to a, a, a relationship with, um, with their higher power? Have you, um, have you poured into somebody? Um, and, and help them to develop within their recovery, right? What have you had an impact in someone's life? Who have you shared Jesus with, right? So, you know, we, 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 we say, um, you know, you have to have a God of your understanding, but it's important for you to know that here in this, um, recovery community, here in this ministry, right? Jesus is our higher power. Jesus being the Son of God, right? Part of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the God, Holy Spirit, right? So who have you shared Jesus with? Or has it been just about you, right? Are you thinking the way that I expressed how I was thinking earlier in this message? See, it's through this revelation that we understand that it's no longer about us, but it's about Christ and, and spreading the gospel, right? That's it. Um, the Great Commission, you know, to be a witness, to be an ambassador for Christ, right? As we go, wherever we go, uh, when we wake up in the morning, we go outside to our mailbox. If we see somebody, you know, out there, right, we're being an ambassador for Christ. Uh, if we're a part of a ministry, you know, we're being an ambassador for Christ. If we're in school, if we're at work, 
uh, we're going to McDonald's. Wherever we go, right, as we go, we are um, making disciples and carrying the message of Jesus Christ. Um, and so it's about being an example um, and an inspiration to those who are or will walk in the shoes that we once walked. Um, but through Christ, now everybody say Christ, we can be made whole and we can live how God intended for us to live, that we can find our purpose. And we can live out that purpose. And so the book, the Green and Gold book, I don't have it with me right now, but the Green and Gold book, it works how and why. Um, the book says on page 113, um, in a sense, step 12 encompasses all the steps. We must make use of what we learned in the previous 11 steps as we carry the message and practice the principles of recovery in all our affairs, right? As we go, right? <laughs> Wherever we go, whatever we do, Right. We must make use of what we learned in the previous 11 steps as we carry the message and practice the principles of recovery in all our affairs. Individually and collectively, each step has contributed to the extraordinary transformation we now know as a spiritual awakening. So, in other words, each step has led us to be um, spiritually connected with Christ so that we could be made new in our minds and in our bodies, in our actions, and our behavior, so that we can go and tell somebody about what Christ has done for us, and that he can do it for them. And without him, this recovery thing would not be possible. I, I need you to understand that, right? Without um, um, without a spiritual connection and without Christ um, in our life, recovery is not possible. The book says on page 118 of It Works, How and Why, Step 12 has a paradoxical aspect and that the more we help others, the more we help ourselves. For instance, if we find ourselves troubled and our faith wavering, there are few actions that have had such an immediate uplifting effect on us as helping the newcomer. Now, you might be saying to yourself, hold on, Pastor. Now, earlier in the message, you said it wasn't about me. Right. But here it says that it is about me. And so this is the paradox. The paradox, right? That as I'm helping someone else, God is helping me. Oh, that's good. That's good right there. As I'm helping someone else, God is helping me. The message is first given to me so that I can then carry the message. The message is ministered to, to me first. I, I am first transformed so I know how powerful the message is and how important the message is. If I don't believe the message, if I'm not transformed by the message, I can't carry the message out. I can't minister the message. If I'm no good, I can't be no good to anybody else. And so as I pour into people, God pours into me, right? The principle is trust in God that he will take care of me so that I can take care of the mission all oh, my goodness that's good i gotta say that again the principle is trust in god that he will take care of me so that i can take care of the mission and what's the mission carrying the message and and, and being an example in all our affairs even in the midst of my struggles i stay focused on christ on his message and on my purpose and he will strengthen us along the way now right now i feel like i'm talking to somebody out there right Right now, some of y'all might be too deep for the some of this some of this stuff that I'm saying right now might be too deep for some of y'all, but I do believe right now God is beginning to speak to somebody. Right, some of you out there are trying to understand how God brought you to this place of recovery, right, and how it's not about you. Like, how why would God do all of this in, in my life and it not be about me? Somebody feels like they're at the end of their rope and they've been carrying a message and, and it's starting to weigh them down. Right. I'm here to tell you that God will give you the strength that you need to keep carrying the message. Somebody may be confused about what they should be doing. God is about to give you a purpose. Somebody out there has been clean for years. And today is the day that you enter into recovery and get a spiritual awakening. Now, here's the truth. Right. I always got to give you the truth. Everybody won't get this. Everyone won't receive this message. That's why the book says we try, right? I tried to tell them, but they just wouldn't listen. The spirit of God gives us compassion for the newcomer or someone new to their faith. And when they walk away or relapse, 
and give back the gift that was freely given to them, right? Some of us may get discouraged, right? Our faith may waver, right? We may become troubled, but we continue to carry the message with the hope that just as this message was ministered to us and changed our lives, it will change someone else's life. It is in this hope that our faith and our strength is renewed. Now, I wish I could tell you that this ministry was easy, um, that carrying the message wasn't heavy, but I can't. In fact, this is one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do, um, leading this recovery ministry, um, being in recovery myself, right? This will be one of the hardest things that you ever, ever do. That's why something extraordinary has to happen. That's why something extraordinary has to take place. That's why there has to be something supernatural working through us in order to do this, right? And something spiritual must happen within us because on our own, we can't do this, period. I don't care what anybody tells you. Alone, we don't have the abilities to do what being in recovery requires us to do or to, to do what, uh, to, uh, alone, we don't have what it takes to, um, to carry this message. But through our relationship with Christ, we are connected to God's spirit. He who gives us the supernatural, extraordinary strength to do the things that we would otherwise wouldn't be able to do. Things like carry the message of hope and recovery. Live a life that is pleasing and acceptable to God. To be selfless and not selfish. To be humble and not prideful. Right? Alone, we can't do all of these things. We need the power of Holy Spirit working through us. That's the supernatural um, that gives us the ability to do those things. The book says on page 118 of It Works, How and Why. Now we must ask ourselves, just what is this message we are trying to carry? Is it that we never have to use drugs again? Is it that through recovery, we cease being likely candidates for jails, institutions, and early death? Is it the hope that an addict, any addict, can recover from the disease of addiction? The message is Second Chronicles 714, my friends. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. This is restoring the relationship. The message is, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if anyone be in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. This is recovering your identity. The message is Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is capturing your purpose and walking in that purpose. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Acts 22, 11 through 16. We won't read it again, but in your own time, you can read it. Um, here we see that Paul, right, the first person who's ever been in recovery, he has a spiritual awakening. He has an encounter with Christ in his life is transformed he enters into this relationship and is given a new identity in christ saul becomes paul saul who was this murderer of christians right saul who was this pharisee saul who was this cruel and wicked man is now chosen by god and given a new identity he becomes paul and his life is used for christ's glory now you may be thinking that god can't use me, right? I've done too much. Um, he surely won't forgive me for those things, right? That I've done, Pastor. Well, we see Paul is our example that God can and will use anyone. And so after he has this spiritual awakening and restores the relationship, he receives his identity. Then God, and everybody say God, God gives him a purpose. And Paul lives out that purpose all the days of his life. Paul would go on to carry the message to all those who were still sick and suffering. The message, relationship, recovery, and purpose. This is the message 
And these are the principles. I don't care who you are or what you have done. Christ is for you and has a plan for your life. And now you may be sitting there thinking like, you know what? I'm not ready. I, I got some stuff I need to take care of. I got some stuff I need to clear up. Right. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it next week or I'll do it next year. Do it now. You may be saying, I, 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 I need to think about it, Pastor. Don't think. Just do it. Take that first step. Take that first step on a journey to the best life that you'll ever live. And that's a life connected with Christ. The Bible says in verse 16 of this passage that what are you waiting for? Get up, be baptized, have your sins washed away. And call on, by calling on the name of the Lord. So what are you waiting for? The time is now. Get up and restore your relationship with God. Recover your identity in Christ. Capture the purpose that God has for your life. And receive the power by Holy Spirit to walk in that purpose. And so I'll leave you with these questions that you can reflect on. And, and truly ask yourself these questions. And pray that Holy Spirit will give you revelation um, as they are answered. First question is, why am I in recovery? Why am I in recovery? The second question is, what have I done since being in recovery? What have I done since being in recovery? The third question is, how can I have an impact in someone's life now that I'm in recovery? Ask Holy Spirit to reveal to you. The answer to these questions and walk in those answers. Father God, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this message. We know that you are here. We know your presence is with us right now. We pray, Father, that as we reflect on these questions, that Holy Spirit will reveal to us the answers and that we would walk living out those answers, Father God. We thank you. We love you. We praise you. We give you all the honor and all the glory for only you are worthy. Now go before us, Father God, lay out the path that you have designed for us and open the doors that you want us to walk through. And may we walk through them, Father God, and may we walk this path glorifying your name, being an example of what it looks like to be in Christ. May we be blessed to be a blessing and be grateful and thankful recipients of the gift of life that you have given us. We ask all these things, Father, in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and through the power of Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. So again, we want to thank you um, for joining us. Um, and, 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 you know, we're open on Mondays for our in-person recovery meetings at Mosaic Midtown Church, 80 West Alexandrine from um, 6 p.m. to around 7.30 p.m., we also have a discipleship class on Fridays um, at Mosaic, 80 West Alexandrine, from um, 4 p.m. to around 5, 5.30 p.m. Um, all are welcome, ages 18 or over, men and women. Um, we pray that you will come and join us. 